doing tonight? Very good. One <laughs> person. <laughs> the enthusiastic Wisconsin people. Well, we're welcoming people all over who are going to watch us by Periscope tonight, our Thursday night prayer meeting. And uh, we're tonight, uh, every prayer meeting is different because we, we, we just want to be led by the Holy Ghost. So tonight, the Lord gave me three specific scriptures that we're to pray over. And I want to do that, but I, as we go along teaching, we'll pray over them. How's that? You know, as, as I'm kind of sharing a little bit, I'm not really going to teach, I'm going to exhort. So, um, first one is Psalms 103, which is a fantastic. I love Psalms 103. It's one of my favorite psalms, and uh, there's a lot in it. And so we're going to pray over that. By the way, you can get your prayer requests and stuff if you need them. But tonight we're just going to go, pray as we go. So Psalms 103, it says, it starts out, and it says this. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me, bless his holy name. I, I think we ought, to, we ought to just pray that we can get to the place to where we can come down here and really bless God like that. Amen. Yeah. So, Father, we just thank you for the body of Christ. We, we're coming into a new time right now, Lord. We're coming into a time of great worship and praise opportunity. And, Father, I just pray that we'll come ready. We'll come willing. We'll come with a desire every time we come to church. But it shouldn't just be a church all the time. We'll bless you with all of our heart. We'll bless you with all of our soul. We'll bless you with all of our strength. Let's do that right now, saints. We bless the Lord. We worship the Lord. We praise him. We glorify you, Lord, for who you are. You are the creator of heaven and earth. You are our God. You are <coughs> mighty. And Lord, we thank you that you're here to hear and answer prayer and to release the power of God across this nation and across in our churches and in wherever you want it to go, <coughs> Lord, in Jesus' name. The second verse in Psalms 103 says, Bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all his benefits. Who forgiveth all thine iniquities and healeth all thy diseases. Hallelujah. You know, that's sometimes we forget, you know, God is the healer. People shouldn't forget that. It says, it says, who forgiveth all. Everybody say all. all. Listen to this. Forget not all his benefits. There's a lot of benefits about being a Christian. And so you're going to point some of them out. Who forgiveth all thy iniquities. Aren't you glad your iniquities are forgiven? Yes. Iniquity is a little bit different than just a sin. Iniquity is a, is a lifestyle of sin. And he's forgiven us all our iniquities. Amen. Hallelujah. Good. Thank you, Lord, for that. And who healeth all our what? Diseases. Let's just thank him that he heals our diseases right now. Father, we thank you that you move across America and around the world with your healing power. This Sunday, Lord God, let your power come down in churches and let people walk out that were crippled, blind eyes, Lord, uh, all across the world. Let your healing power manifest because that is a benefit. That's a benefit to the body of Christ by your stripes, by your wounds, and by your bruises. We were healed. And Father, we release that tonight. We release your healing power to come this week in meetings here and across the nation and around the world yeah. <coughs> in Jesus' name. Let's all thank the Lord for uh, God giving gifts of healings to people and pouring out his healing power all over right now. We thank you, Lord. We thank you, Lord. We ask we receive that now in Jesus' name. And we thank you, Father, for healing and touching and ministering. I want to pray for Rod Parsley. Yeah. Rod Parsley, had they, they, they diagnosed him with uh, throat cancer. Now, he's a preacher. That's an attack on him and his voice. So, Father, we just lift up Rod to you right now in Jesus' name. We speak and we agree right now for that cancer to be dissolved, to be burnt out of him, to leave him not affect his vocal cords so he can still preach and let him come out of this with a testimony that glorifies you. That's what we're talking about right now. All, all, he has benefits being a Christian. You heal all his diseases. You heal this disease right now. We curse cancer in the name of Jesus and command it to wither and die in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord. 
who redeemeth thy life from destruction. How many here can testify that God has redeemed you from destruction? Yep. You ought to claim that. If you travel as much as I do, you're claiming it all the time. You, know? you go over those, I remember one time we went over a hill, uh, up on the Highway 80, over down those hills, those, those, those mountains, and, all, and flying down there. Everybody's flying. If you don't fly, you get run over. Yep. And so we're flying down the hill, and all of a sudden, boom, our front tires just shredded. It didn't, it didn't blow. It shredded. And somehow, some way, we just kind of eased off over into the side. Oh, thank God, we should have flipped. I got down there where the guy repaired the tire. Finally, he goes, you guys should be dead. I said, yes, but you see, he redeemeth us from our destructions. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And the angels were working that day. Amen. I want to I want to I want to pray this. Let's just pray right now for the church. You know, right now in Iraq and in Pakistan and different places, the Christians are being sought out by ISIS and different things to be killed. And they're killing their little kids, what they're doing. Uh, their little kids uh, won't uh, renounce Christ, which they don't. Then they kill them. They're trying to stop the next generation of Christians. And so, Father, we just pray for protection. We pray and intercede for protection over those people. A lot of those people are real, real unknowledgeable Christians. They don't know who they are in Christ. They don't understand faith. So, Father, we, we, you said, Father, we are to take up the infirmities of the weaker ones. And so, Father, we surround them by faith. We ask you to put your angels all around them and do miracles, Lord God, all over them. Protect the missionaries. Protect the ones that are working with them in the name of Jesus Christ. Let there be testimonies after testimony of your divine protection because you redeemed our life from destruction. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Who crowneth thee? Who crowneth thee? There's a few people I'd like to crown. Well, we won't go there. Who crowneth thee with loving kindness and tender mercies. Everybody say loving kindness, loving kindness. <laughs> and yeah. tender mercies. Tender Aren't you glad that God doesn't crown us with something else? <laughs> My mom used to say that. You don't stop that. I'm going to crown you. I knew what that meant. <laughs> of course, nowadays it would probably be abuse. But anyway, uh, lo everybody say loving kindness, loving and, kindness. Tender mercies. and tender mercies. Now, Father, we thank you. We, we, we stand on that. We claim that. We claim loving kindness and tender mercies be poured out upon all of us. Thank you, Lord God, not judgment. We thank you, Lord God, for mercy, mercy, mercy. Everybody say mercy. mercy. You ever needed mercy? We all do. Yeah. Mercy, mercy me. Amen. And th who satisfy thy mouth with good things so the youth is renewed like the eagles. Father, I pray that you'll set a watch on every Christian's mouth. Teach us, Father, to value our words, how important it is to speak right words, how important it is to speak words of faith and victory and joy and power, and to speak the word of God out of our mouth. Teach us right now, Lord, in the name of Jesus, so that our youth can be renewed like the eagles. Hallelujah. Amen. Father, I pray for every person, every Christian on this planet that's over 50 years old especially. I pray a youth renewing Praise God, power of God coming on every single one of them. Lord, raise us up. Lord, make us strong. Give us long life with health and vitality in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Can you all say amen to that? Amen. See, the younger amen. people aren't amen in quite as long, but you know, the older you get, amen. Long, vital, powerful strength flowing through our bodies. Lord, just like our, when we were young, put a... Put a little dance in our step and a little gleam in our eye. Hallelujah. An ability to go long hours even, Lord, with good energy. Amen. In Jesus' name. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The Lord executes righteousness and judgment for all that are oppressed. So, Father, we thank you for all that are oppressed. The Bible says that Jesus went around uh, in Acts chapter 10, verse 30. He went around healing the Spirit of the Lord is upon them to heal, the Bible says, all that were oppressed of the devil. How many know oppression comes from the devil? Yes. You know how many people I've met over the years that are oppressed and depressed and all kinds of oppressed? And I, right now, we're just going to lift them up. 
I lift up every oppressed person, every depressed person, every demon inflicted person, every person that has depression of any kind, whether it be spiritual or physical. Father, we take authority over those evil spirits and that, those, those, that oppression, and we command it to come out of them in Jesus' name. And Father, we ask you to release that power all over through the churches, even this week. In Jesus' name, let that, let that oppression lift and let us have victory. Let them have victory. Let them have victory. Let them have victory. Let them have victory and joy, joy unspeakable and full of glory. Somebody, 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 somebody say amen to that. I felt like there's people being delivered from that right now. People being delivered from that right now in Jesus' name. He made known his ways unto Moses and his acts to the children of Israel. This is one of the most important scriptures that we can claim. We need to know more than just the acts of God. People talk all the time about the acts of God. We're going to have signs and wonders, signs and wonders, signs and wonders. Uh, it's not enough just to know the acts of God. We, know, we need to know the ways of God, the wisdom of God. So we release that. We ask you, Lord, to show us your way. Remember the song? Show me your way. That's a, good, that's a good song, good way to pray. Father, show us your way. Show us your wisdom. Lead us, guide us, help us, and keep us in your perfect will. Every Christian that has slid out of your perfect will, we intercede and ask you to bring them back into your perfect will, Lord, in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. And all of you said amen to that. That's it. Back in to God's perfect will. You see, if you're not in his perfect will, it'll be hard for you to receive the things that are his perfect will. Yes. People don't realize that, but it's true. And so we want to be one who knows the ways of God. The Lord is merciful and gracious and slow to anger and plenteous in mercy. He will not always chide, neither will he, his anger be forever. He hath not dealt with us after our sins. Aren't you glad? Yes. Yes. Amen. Yep. Amen. He has not dealt with us. Did you hear that? Yeah. After our sins. That's right. A lot of people think, you know, somehow God's punishing them for this or that. Let me tell you something. They said, Pastor Tom, you don't know what I've done in my life. But the blood of Jesus Christ washes all that away. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. The second somebody comes to the Lord Jesus Christ, the blood of Jesus Christ washes their past clean. People are just tied up and thinking that they have to do something to earn their salvation. Yes. Aren't you glad you just put your trust in that finished blood of Jesus yeah, Christ, finished yes. work through the blood of Jesus Christ? Yes. Father, we, we just right now lift condemnation off of people. Yes. Right now, across America and around the world, we ask you to deal with condemnation and to lift that off of people. Father, let them be set free from condemnation. Let them know who they are in Christ. Let them know that they're the righteousness of God. Let them know that you're not holding that against them. Father, it says here, praise God, that you, uh, are, you, you, are, uh, you are not, you're, you're not dealing with us after our sins, nor reward us according to our iniquities. If, if God did that, we'd be in trouble, but he says he doesn't do that. Amen. Hallelujah. You know, this is one of the things people don't, you didn't know even God loves and will bless sinners? Yep. Yeah. Amen. Amen. Sure he will. Sure he will. He loves and will even bless sinners. You know, sometimes it just, the, the mercy of God, the power of God is really awesome. Amen. Verse 11. For as the heaven is high above the earth, so great is his mercy toward them that fear him. All right. <laughs> Everybody say, all right. All right. How, how high? Is the heaven above the earth? Somebody answer me. This is quiz time. How high is the heaven above the earth? There is no end. There is no end. Let me answer it for you. Is there an end to that? No. How far can you travel high? If you went up and if you went up and kept going, could you? How many know you just? Came, how many know the, the 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 scientists even tell us that that the that the uh, what do they call call that the universe, universe is yeah. is still creating itself at the speed of light or whatever yeah. it is. So no matter how far you go and how fast you go, you're not catching up. Yeah. Yeah. Hallelujah! That's right. So that tells me something. That tells me his mercy goes that far for all of us who reverence God. Hallelujah. Woo! Father, I pray that you'll give a, a, a real revelation of that to people all over America and around the world today. 
especially overseas. I don't know what it is about people overseas. Have you ever watched them preach? I mean, they'll jump and they'll shout and they're mad. It looks like they're mad and they make God look like, it makes God look like he's mad at everybody. God's not mad at everybody. Amen. Say, God's going to get you. If God's going to get you, you would have already been God. <laughs> now, you don't want to get on the wrong side of God and you don't want to get on the wrong side of his people. Especially as preachers, as anointed preachers. Don't do that because if you do that, you put yourself in a place where the devil can come and, and harass you. Amen. But uh, even if you've done that, call on his mercy. Amen. Amen. Now, this is the, one of the best scriptures in the Bible right here at verse 12. Are you ready for this? Oh, yes. As far as the east is from the west, so far hath he removed our transgressions from us. Now, you can answer this one because I already answered it on the last one. How far is it from the east to the west? It, it, never, it never comes to an end because he just keeps going. Same thing. So that's how far his transgressions have been removed from us. Yes. The redeemed. Hallelujah. Like as a f father pitieth his children, so the Lord pitieth them that fear him. For he knoweth our frame and remembers that we're but dust. Have you ever thought about yourself? Man, how flaky sometimes you might think you are. We're but dust and God knows that. If you make a mistake, you know, it shouldn't shock you. You're going to make a few mistakes, but it doesn't shock God either. He knows we're but dust. That's why Jesus had to come. Amen. 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 Praise God. So far as far as for man his days are as grass, the flower of the field, so he flourishes. For the wind passes over and is gone, and the place thereof shall know it no more. But the mercy of the Lord is from everlasting to everlasting. I think he's trying to explain something to us. The mercy of the Lord is what? Everlasting to everlasting. Now, how long is that? Everlasting. If it was one everlasting, it's everlasting. But if it's one everlasting to another everlasting... Well, I think that's everlasting. 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 everlasting to ever upon them that fear him, reverence him, and his righteousness unto their children's children. Hey, yes. now there we can claim something. How about this prayer? He, they, that going on to our children's children. Yes. See, now I'm old enough to have grandchildren, right? right. So that should be from them from, to the children to their children, right? Yes. So, Father, right now, we want to claim every child of God has a claim over this yes. promise for our children's children. And, Lord, we don't let the devil take a one of them. We take authority over every demon spirit assigned to try to take our children out and to turn them over to the world, and we will not stand for it. We stand in the gap for every one of them, and we proclaim with faith and with victory and with passion and, and, and with everything within us, Devil, get your dirty hands off of the children and the grandchildren. We claim every one of them back, every one of them for the kingdom of God, and you will not steal a one of them in the name of Jesus. Amen. 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 Whew. I don't know about you, but I, I feel good I came to church tonight after that. Amen. <laughs> to such as keep the covenant... And to those that remember his commandments to do them. The Lord hath prepared his throne in the heavens, and his kingdom ruleth over all. Bless the Lord, ye his angels, that excel in strength, that do his commandments, hearkening unto the voice of his word. Amen. All right, I've been preaching on this. When I went out on the last trip, I preached on this. How many know angels are here tonight? How many know every time we get an utterance from the word of God, we utter? See, we are the voice of his uh, the voice of God's commandments and the voice of his word in the earth comes out of our mouth. Preaching, teaching, prophesying, tongues, interpretation, words of wisdom, words of knowledge, whatever it might be, praise God. Preaching like we're doing tonight, prayer, praying in tongues. Yes. Yeah, you heard me, praying in tongues, more than y'all. The more we pray in tongues, the more <coughs> angelic powers are released. And every church should be a place, praise God, of his dominion. Let's read on. It says, bless ye the Lord, all his hosts, that you minister, <coughs> excuse me, his ministers <coughs> of his that do his pleasure. Excuse me, got some dust in the air. Dust yes. in the wind. Dust. 
Verse 22, bless the Lord all, all his works in all places of his dominion. Bless you, the Lord, oh my soul. Places of his dominion. Ladies and gentlemen, the places of his dominion should be his churches, his revival centers, his places where the glory is fallen, his regional centers where the, uh, where the power of God can move out into whatever he wants to do. And angels, just like in Genesis, where, where that boy, was it Jacob? Yeah, Jacob's ladder, right? So Jacob, he, 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 make, he, he lays down, and God gives him this dream about the angels going up and down and a ladder to heaven, and then he, he calls it the house of God, and he builds an altar. Amen? Amen? Every church is a place, should be a place, where God can send forth his angels up and down and around and back, sending them with something to do, praise God, as we utter God's word. Angels, you know, Larry Huggins was talking about this the other, the other day. He he said he, he he they got this. He got up into this thunderstorm, and it was really getting nasty. I know what it's like to get in a cotton thunderstorm. I don't like you know. The, and and he goes, angels, do your work. And he said immediately, everything calmed down. Amen. We have more authority than we ever thought we did. Amen. Everybody say, angels, angels. Go, forth go forth and minister, and minister. on behalf. Of all the believers, believers. we release you. you. Send them blessing, blessing. money, Money. finances, Finances. souls. Souls. You know, the angels get involved in moving people into the right position so somebody can witness to them. Hallelujah. I said, hallelujah. Oh, hey. I dropped those, didn't I? Everybody say angels. They are sent forth. The Bible says that they're ministering spirits, all of them. The Bible says all of them are ministering spirits. That's what it says. And all of them, hey, give me one of those icebreakers, will you? (laughs) Probably a couple of them would be good right now. Did I eat any garlic? Thank you. Everybody on, on, on Periscope, take an ice uh, breaker break. And grab yourself an ice breaker. Um, what was I talking about? Angels? Yeah. Every angel. The Bible says they are sent forth yes. to minister on behalf of those who should be heirs of salvation. That's, right. That's the unsaved. Before you, you were flaky, most of you, when you were unsaved. Oh, yes. Yeah. Angels are ministering to you, watching over you. Boy, I tell you what, me and me and uh, Jeannie know. Oh, yeah. <laughs> we are down there at the old Winterland. You know, everybody. I don't know who you could. You know, watching whoever it was, Ted Nugent get up on his amp and jump off like an idiot. <laughs> you know, we were all we were all you know out of our minds. And I remember I went to the ZZ Top concert, Cow Palace puked in my boots. God was watching me. He was watching over me because he knew I was going to come in, honey. And I don't know who was praying for me, but somebody was praying for me and somebody's praying for you right now in Jesus name. And let me tell you something. Angels also are assigned to minister on our behalf. You know what the word minister is there? Look it up. It means the waiter. It means to serve like a waiter would serve you. They are here to serve. And it's, it's, not, uh, it's not something they don't, you know, they don't want to do. They want to, somebody to say something so they can go do something. Amen. Man, most, I got, I've been to churches where if there's any word that was preached in that church, I, I couldn't, it, the angel must be frustrated. The angels must be frustrated standing around there. We have, don't have anything to work with. No prophecy. They don't believe in it here. Yeah. Yeah. So how can, you, how can you be released if you never have a rhema from the word of God, you know? Amen. No tongues of angels. You know, sometimes when you're and you're praying like that and you get real intense, you don't even know what you're saying. God is telling angels what to do through your mouth, man. He's releasing them across the nations and into the White House. You know what we ought to do? We ought to get about a million Christians to go around the White House and just say, we're going to pray for three days. We're not even going to talk. We're going to pray in tongues for three days around the White House. And at the end of that, everybody take a tour and just pray all the way through the halls 
As I guarantee you, the witches have been there and done all their stuff, so we need to cancel that out in Jesus' name. I don't know about you, but I done blessed myself happy on that deal there. All right. The next one the Lord told me to deal with tonight. You say, Pastor Tom, do you always do all the praying? No, but tonight I'm going to, they're all agreeing with me, right? Yes. Psalm 34, we just, we just follow the leading of the Lord. You know, every prayer meeting I've ever been to or every service I've ever been to, I've never been to the same. This is what I like about Christianity. It should be fun. Yeah. And not boring. You know, I say little things on purpose, like, you know, get the breath mints. Just a hair lip a religious person. Amen. What do you mean, Martha? You stopped in the middle of a sermon and asked for a breath mint. I've never seen that before. <laughs> Somebody asked me if I was religious. They do that all the time. Whenever you ask me if I'm religious on Periscope, you're going to get it. Because I just flat tell them, I hate religion. That shocks people. Good You're a preacher. Yeah. yeah, but I can't stand religion. Now, pure religion is fine. Yes. But not the kind of stuff we have today. Yes. And counting BBs and bells and everything else to try to get somebody, you know, pull them. Like, you, know, like you might as well just work a slot machine. Yeah. Hope to God this happens. Hope to God this happens. That's right. You know? No, no, no. We got a God who hears and answers our prayers. You know how we know God answers our prayers? Because if he's the one who forms the prayer through us, as we're under the anointing, I guarantee you he's going to answer yes. that prayer. Yes, yes. What did I say? Psalms, what was it? 34. 34. 34. I will bless the Lord at all times. Amen. There we go again. His praise <laughs> shall continually be in my mouth. Yep. All right, now here's the thing I want to talk to you about tonight. His praise shall what? Continually. How about some of us praying for some Christians to praise God? I mean, I got up here in Wisconsin. I got up north up there in that first church, and I said, come on, say amen, somebody. They look at me like I was some kind of a nutcase. I said, bring your Bibles to church. If you're embarrassed about bringing your Bible to church, put it in a sack. They wouldn't bring their Bibles to church. They wouldn't say amen. They don't want to bless the Lord. I said, let's bless the Lord. Stand up and bless the Lord. It took me about two years for him to say, bless the Lord, you know. And I'm telling you right now, we got to be willing to give praise to God. Hallelujah. My soul shall make her boast in the Lord. The humble shall hear thereof and be glad. Father, I pray that you'll put a spirit of humility on the body of Christ. I pray we'll be so humble, we'll walk around, Lord God, in your presence, knowing and realizing how wonderful and awesome you are and how really insignificant we are as human beings and we need you. You know what humility is? It's relying on God with everything you got. Yes. Amen. You trust him with your whole personality, man. That's what faith is. That's what believing is. In the Bible, when it says believe, that's what it means. You, you're, you're, you're trusting him with all of your spirit, your soul, and everything within you. You are clinging to him Amen. that strongly. Yes. Amen. 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 Oh, magnify the Lord with me. Boy, I hope I don't suck any of these down. I did that one time when I was preaching, you know, and they had to almost thought about giving me the Heinemann there for a minute. That would be terrible, wouldn't it? Preacher chokes on a mint. <laughs> yeah, put it on YouTube. That would you'd get a lot of views on it. Oh, magnify the Lord with me. And let us exalt his name together. Okay, what does it mean to magnify the Lord? It means to make him bigger, look bigger and bigger and bigger. And we're supposed to do that together. Father, we magnify you tonight. We magnify you tonight. We look at you as the God who can do anything. You can change anything. There's nothing you cannot do and nothing you cannot change. Yes. Thank you, Jesus. And we trust you. Yes. We trust you with all of our being. Yes, In the name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord. And let the body of Christ come to the place where they trust you with all of their being. I've been yes. telling people for years, they're going to have to learn how to live by faith. Yep. Amen. Yes, thank you. Overseas. 
You got to learn how to live by faith. You say, well, you Americans got all the money and everything, and so you're supposed to give us money. Well, we can help you, but I want you to know you can bring in money too with your faith right where you're at. Yeah. Yes. You say, I don't believe that. <laughs> they did it in Africa. They've done it in Korea. Amen. If you can teach people to believe God, God has people that can supply all over the world. Amen. And if he doesn't, he'll raise somebody up. Yeah. Yes, Amen. Amen. In fact, let's pray that. Father, we pray right now that you raise up business people yes. all over the world, for people listening to me all over the world. Raise them up, teach them about business, teach them about handling money to the point to where they're given literally millions of dollars and sowing millions of dollars into ministries that need it right now in Jesus' name. Let, let them start where they're at, but teach them how to prosper, Father, in Jesus' name, in all that they're doing, in Jesus' name. Everybody said amen. amen. Now listen to this. I sought the Lord. And he heard me and delivered me from all my what? Fears. fears. Do you know how many people live in fear? Mm -hmm. Now the Bible says God has not given us a spirit of fear, but of love and a power and sound mind. Amen. And see, I don't let fear bug me. Yeah. I, I'm out there. My wife has gone to uh, Panama and I'm in that house out there. If you watch my periscope today, I went around out there where I live. There's nothing out there. And boy, I tell you what, when you're all alone, quiet can be loud. <laughs> And all of a sudden, real late at night, you hear, you know, you don't know what it is. The plumbing's going off and the, you know, the raccoons are running over the top of the thing. And, you know, you got squirrels in the attic. I don't know up there. We never know what it is. I know we had something in the attic because that thing was running around up there, you know. <laughs> I'm thinking, and, 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 you know, you start, all of a sudden you start, ooh, ooh, you know. And you have to rebuke that stuff in Jesus' name. You can't let it get fear on you. Amen? I said amen. amen. So let's rebuke fear. Can we do that? Let's stand against fear. That might have been a little funny, but, you know, fear is, fear is not of God. No. <laughs> fear is a horrible thing. I remember Norval Hayes cast the devil out of somebody one day. And uh, this person, they could not go to sleep without running the water. They had to have the water running. I called it the water running devil. If the water wasn't running, then they could not sleep. Isn't that weird? I said, that's weird. If the water was running all the time, I couldn't sleep either. I'd be running to the bathroom. But that'd be normal. <clears throat> Father, we just take authority over fear right now. In the name of Jesus. That spirit of fear has tormented people for years. And we take authority over that fear in Jesus' name. And we bind that spirit of fear. We command it to get off and get out of every Christian. In the name of Jesus right now. Father, we are not a people of fear. We are a people of faith. We release faith. Faith through the word of God to every individual this week that hears the word of God. How many know faith is rising right now in our hearts? Just going through the word of God like this. Amen. They looked unto him and were lightened with their faces, were not ashamed. The poor man cried, and the Lord heard him and saved him out of all of his troubles. Hallelujah. Amen. What happens if you're poor and you're in trouble? Call out to God. Amen. He'll help you. Yeah. The angel of the Lord encamps around about them that fear him and delivereth yeah. them. There it is again. Father, we thank you that the angels of the Lord yeah. encamp around about us. Yeah. They're, yeah. they're encamped around about us. Yeah. You know, I'm standing over there. My pastor's here. He'll be preaching Sunday, yeah. uh, 10 o'clock and six, six, six o'clock or whatever. Yeah. We'll get on the Periscope about 6.30. And you know, I'm standing there. We're listening to the song where the angels were singing with the guy. I don't know if you ever heard that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yes. And so I, and, Pastor, and Pastor John hadn't heard that. I said, I'll put that on. You know, Pastor John's a big guy bigger than me. And he's sitting over there, you know. Listen to this, and we're listening to this. And he kind of starts almost dozing off. He's listening to this. And I learn, turn around, and I look out my, my window in the backyard, and I see something rustling around back there. I think, I'm thought, there's somebody out there? <laughs> and it might be a Sasquatch or something. You know, you never know out there. I'm like, is there something? So, and all of a sudden, I see these men moving in the trees. And I go, that's strange. And all of a sudden, one of these, um, these it was an angel. Starts walking toward the house, walking on the, on the air. 
walking straight toward me. I go, that's interesting. <laughs> and he, he comes right there walking right. He walked right through the, the glass doors. Didn't even open it. Looks at me and smiles. And he had this like big old scroll looking thing. Turns around, went over and laid it on Pastor John's belly. Had to be a big scroll right on Pastor John's belly. And it disappeared. And then he looked up at me, smiled at me, and he walks out. And he went out into the trees. I go, those angels are, that's the first thing I thought of. Those angels are encamping around about my house. They're out there camping right now. They're watching over everything. No devil better try to come around there, right? Your house is being encamped around about. Your cars are being encamped around about. Let me tell you something. And you say, what, that, what was that, Pastor Tom? Well, I don't know. Since that time, his prophetic ministry took off. I don't understand everything about that kind of stuff, you know. I'm, I, sometimes I even don't want to share it. People think you're a nutcase, but that's okay. <laughs> I'm used to that. Okay. Verse 8, taste and see that the Lord is good <laughs> because is the man that trusts in him. Oh, fear the Lord, ye his saints, for there is no want to them that fear him. There is no want to them that fear him. There is no want. I think one of the reasons we don't prosper is we don't have enough fear of God. Enough reverence for God. Father, we just pray right now for the spirit of the fear of the Lord. Not a bad fear, but a good fear. The fear of, of reverence for God to come on the body of Christ. And John Brevet talks about that, the fear of the Lord. You ever read that book? It's a good book. Everybody ought to read that. The fear of the Lord to come on the body of Christ. All over. You know what we need? We need services that make you tremble. We need services that you say, man, you know, if there's anything in me, I want it out. We need services that we're saying, you know what? This is holy in here. This is almost scary to be here almost because it's so intense and so holy. Have you ever been to a church service that was drier than chalk dust? Huh? And you sit there and you go, God, I'd almost be ready. I, I mean, just if you're going to be honest, you know, anything would be better than that. A ball game. Gilligan's Island. Anything. Because it's just like, this is supposed to be church. And there, it just seemed, no, we need services where the power and the glory of God is so strong, you could almost cut out a piece of it and take it home and go to sleep on it. Give it to us, Lord. Amen. Come on, everybody, start praying. Give it to us, Lord. Give us that fear of God. Give us that glory in the name of Jesus. The young lions do lack and suffer hunger, but they that seek the Lord shall not want any good thing. Come, ye children, hearken unto me. I will teach you the fear of the Lord. God will teach us. Come on. I never really saw that before. God said he'll teach us the fear of the Lord. Lord, teach us. To fear you. That message, let it go all around the world right now. And Father, get, come upon your servants to get up and preach and teach about these things. We need some of that. We even need some of these real motivational guys to give a few services to the fear of the Lord or something. Get off of all that candy stuff and get over here where we can learn a little bit about some meaty stuff. Amen. Thank you for your enthusiasm. Amen. The man, what man is he that desireth the life and, and loveth many days that he may see good? Keep thy tongue from evil and thy lips from speaking God. Boy, that's a good one. Amen. Again, we pray, Father, you watch over our mouths in Jesus' name. Amen. Depart from evil and do good. Seek peace and pursue it. We need to seek peace and pursue it. <clears throat> The eyes of the Lord are upon the righteous, and his ears are open unto their cry. Hallelujah. Amen. The face of the Lord is against them that do evil, to cut off the recompense of them from the earth. The righteous cry, and the Lord hears and delivers them out of all their troubles. We claim that. Yes. Whatever trouble we're going through, we thank you that you deliver us out of that trouble. I don't know how many times I prayed that prayer. I've been in trouble a lot of times in my life. And just as it seemed like I didn't know what was going to happen, how could we possibly? But God has always been faithful. Yes. And, the, and the older you get, the more experiences you have, you don't get all upset about what you used to get upset about. 
That's right. Exactly. Amen. The Lord is nigh them that are of a broken heart and save us such as of a contrite spirit. That's what we need. He's talking about that. He's talking about brokenness, the fear of the Lord, a contrite spirit. One of the ways I teach leaders, I treat, I, uh, one of the ways that I pick leadership is I watch for people with a contrite spirit in service. Amen. A person who's never been broken and never cried. You don't ever see any tears coming. You got to watch out for that person. Amen. Amen. Somebody that's got a contrite spirit. What's that mean? It means there's a brokenness about them. They're a broken vessel that God can feel. Amen. 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 It says, many are the afflictions of the righteous, but the Lord delivereth out of them out of half of them. No. You'd think the body, no. some of the stuff I see on Facebook, <laughs> some of the stuff I see on Facebook, they say maybe 20% if we're all having a good day. Yeah. All of them. Yeah. All of them. Yeah. Father, thank you. Come on. Thank you, Lord, for delivering us from all our afflictions in the name of Jesus. He keepeth all his bones and not one of them is broken. I like that. Thank you, Lord, for keeping my bones. Not one of them is broken. Evil shall slay the wicked and they that hate the righteous shall be desolate. The Lord redeemeth the soul of his servants and none of them that trust in him will be desolate. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Everybody say, thank you, Lord. Lord, we release your goodness. We release your mercy. We release it tonight in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. One more. Psalms 133. This is a short one. This is my prayer tonight. I'm praying specifically tonight for this because we need this. There has been many attempts in the body of Christ to try to bring unity. And pretty much all of them fail because God wasn't really doing it. You say, what do you mean God wasn't doing it? Well, God wants us to be unified, but he doesn't unify around a bunch of foolishness and buffoonery. Amen. The way God will bring unity is if we're all sincere. Yes. Right? Right? We have a heart after God, we're humble, and we're willing to change according to what his word says. When that happens, you're not the big, you know, you're not sitting there thinking you know everything, and you're better than everybody else. Amen. And we can come together, and we can begin to have true God-established unity. Yes. Mm -hmm. Now, I noticed something. Overseas, where they've had revival, they have unity. If you go down to Panama, these pastors get along great. They, I mean, there's a lot of unity amongst them. Uh, and the leaders are respected, and people watch their shows. There's not a whole lot of that strife stuff. They're just thankful to be alive and thankful to be serving God. And when they do something, they, uh, uh, Pastor Alvarez down there in, in Panama, they have this, this meeting he leads up every year. They fill the soccer It's the biggest meeting they have. They fill the soccer stadium to overflowing just for, like, what, seven days? How long is it? Seven days. And every, all the churches come to that. I mean, it is, it's no, it's, there's none of that strife stuff. Oh, praise God. All right. So Psalms 133, behold how good and how pleasant it is for brethren to dwell together in unity. I say this, we release a spirit of unity in the congregations right now. How many know we got a blessed congregation here? I've noticed something about this congregation. You want to hear something really funny? How many want to hear something funny? Yes, yes. If, you, if you get out of unity at home and you're not really with us, you're going to leave. Yep. <laughs> I don't have to make you leave. They just leave. You yeah. say, why? Because if they're not with us and they're not true and they're not right, yeah. they won't like it here. Yeah, right. And they'll just leave. Yeah. I noticed that since I was in Reno. Because you see where the Spirit of the Lord is, God's going to deal with you. You can't be flaky and you can't be, have one foot in and one out. When you come into a place where there's love and unity and power flowing and you're on the outside and you're not like that, you have this thing going on in your heart, how many know you're going to be the one who leaves? And you're going to say things like, you know what, God's not moving down there anymore. Yeah. And ridiculous things. Where everybody else is, everybody else is just going, that's the greatest thing. We were having a revival, and that person's going, I think I'm going to go over here. Yeah. 
And then they go there for about three weeks yep, to a month. And then the next thing you know, they're down the road. Yeah. Down the road again, there they go. Yep. And they do it their whole life because they're more spiritual than everybody else. Yep. That's what they really think. That's but right. you know what? Well, we, need, we need to come to church. We need to come to church with love and unity. Yes. Yes. Getting some good confidence on that. Am I getting a lot of hearts? Yeah. Are the hearts are flowing, yeah. baby? Come on, hearts. <laughs> <laughs> the hearts that's the funniest thing i've ever seen hearts going on. i love it man i get lots of hearts i want a million hearts by the end of the month you know i used to watch this pre oh i don't know i shouldn't say this i'm gonna say it anyway there was this preacher his name was uh, gene scott he's dead now and Gene would get, get on, I would be up with, with some of my preacher buddies. After Sunday night, we'd all sit around eating popcorn. And we'd watch Gene Scott because it was the funniest thing on TV. And he would get on there and he would have a bottle of scotch whiskey. And a great big cigar in his mouth. And he'd be talking about all kind of stuff. And it was really strange because his program, he had this, this uh, his daughter, I, I thought it was his daughter, but it was his wife. And he would have ZZ Top come on. Uh, she's got legs. And, it would, and, 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 and it, she would be riding the horses around, or the horse around on his property, and, and ZZ Top would be singing that. And they'd come back to him. And he'd say, now he'd say this. Listen. He says, I need $10,000 uh, this hour, you bunch of, bl and I'm a bunch of blankety, blank, blankety, blank people. And he says, I want that money now, you bunch of blankety blank, but you know, hit, take a hit of scotch. <laughs> Puff off a cigar. And you know what? That guy got that money every <laughs> single time. And I'm sitting there thinking, I told Pastor Bob one time, I said, Pastor Bob, maybe he's got the answer to fundraising. All right, here we go. Oh my God. <laughs> it is like precious ointment. Upon the head that ran down upon the beard, even Aaron's beard. Now he's the high priest. And went down to the skirts and the garments. As the dew of Haran and the dew that descended upon the mountains of Zion. For there the Lord commanded the blessing. Yes. Even life yes. forevermore. Now think about this. That starts up at our head, high priest, Jesus. Yes. He's the one who sends that anointing on us. Yes. He looks down, he sees, if he sees that unity, see that, that, that anointing off him flows down, flows down through us, yes. comes to all of us, and just moves through us. And when the anointing of unity is like that, and we're all in one accord like that, there's nothing to hinder the flow of God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Father, we ask you tonight to bring unity to those that will flow with you in this last day's yes. great move of God. We thank you, Father. We repent of all of our pride, yes. thinking we're better than everybody else. And we're the only ones who have all the answers. We've all been there as preachers. And we're all wrong. Everybody's wrong. Not everybody's right all the time, 100% of the time. I admit that. But Father, bring us to a place where that's not the main thing. The main thing is we love each other. We're praying for each other. Amen. And we're helping one another. Yes. In Jesus' name. And everybody said, Amen. 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 That was good tonight, wasn't it? Yeah.